Hello guys, welcome to another A Few Money. Let me apologize uh, first of all because I didn't make any videos in the previous two days. Um, you know, my neighbor has been having some refurbishment works just uh, next door. So there's a lot of noise. It's uh, impossible to record anything without, you know, you guys hearing what's happening there. So I hope today um, we are luckier than the than I was the previous two days with all this noise um, also I've been I've been trying to solve some technical details here with the, all the setup for for the the videos you are watching so I hope uh, from now on I can I can produce more videos at least one a day or in you know in the worst case scenario one every two days um, and that's it so i apologize for that so let's go to the charts okay uh, so let's start with the price to time model what's happening here let me just increase the zoom because some of you guys cannot see this on your phones and even some smaller screens okay so we are now trading above the exponential line here. So let me zoom a bit. So as you can see, the weekly candle is now trading above. So we have a close above on the previous week, above the line. We have this current weekly candle is, is currently trading above the exponential line also so i think we are still a bit overextended in price considering you know the time that we need to go to the top so you know my opinion already when we are a bit overextended uh, some corrections may happen as we seen before so let's hope everything goes okay and the price doesn't you know uh, come back down. Uh, I've been I've been trying to understand what price level could we have some kind of correction, and I have some targets just around 70k, 72k. Uh, so let's see what happens. But I don't I don't really like the price above this line. It would be much, uh, you know, much better if we had a bull run like this, like in 2017, when the price did not even touch this line. We had some smoother corrections, like 15, 20%, and this was much nicer than we are seeing now. So for those who didn't watch my, my previous video, uh, the blue area of the price to time model is the new um, add-on I've been working on. This is just a speculation. Speculation, please. Uh, don't take uh, any of this for granted. This was just me trying to play with the charts. And basically this is a speculation about what we might expect if we have uh, after this current bull run, if we have something like 2017, which is, you know, this uh, this chart here, the price action here in blue is just a copy of what happened in 2017. So this is, as I told you before, this is just a speculation. But it's interesting to see what price levels we could expect in the next bull run, um, which if the speculation comes to be at least close to what happens, we could be around four and a half million dollars for each Bitcoin. But as I said, this is just a speculation. So that's it for the price to time model. The price is a bit above the line. Uh, I don't like it. It may trigger some kind of correction. So let's see what happens. Okay, going to the MRI chart let's check the monthly chart so very little changes here we are still very very extended 
you know the chart looks bullish to me all the indicators the oscillators are bullish at this point in time there's no reversal on any of them the rsi continues to point up all the moving averages are also pointing up nothing has really changed so let's go to the weekly okay the weekly uh also uh we have uh we have a bearish divergence here i just noticed that so something like that and so it started around here so this is this is a bearish divergence not a good signal by the way not not no bueno <laughs> no bueno this bearish divergence the macd continues bullish so you know neutral here but the lines keep going up no signs that this is going to reverse at least for the next few days one or two weeks maybe but this i don't like this bearish divergence here in the rsi this one is very neutral okay so let's remove that let's oh, actually actually let's leave it there let's see how this goes hmm it's not very good here so like that much better okay so let's go to the daily chart yeah exactly what i was thinking so we have a divergence here let me show you guys this is also a price divergence so we are not this this top did not touch that line so we have a divergence also in the price action um the macd is about to touch you know the lines are touching each other if the blue line crosses below the orange line then this is a bearish uh, signal also the rsi is pretty neutral the funding rate for the daily is below the threshold of 0 0.11 so you know very neutral chart for now uh, i would say that we have two lines here that are very relevant so let me just plot the second line here which would be yeah, exactly here so these are the two lines that will make me bullish if the price action crosses to the upper side of this line if the price action crosses to the down sides of this line here then i'm a bit bearish again so let me just give you the price levels this one is uh, the first line the below you know the this one below the price action is around 56k this one here is 58 900 almost almost 59k so the price action is now in between these two lines uh, let's see how the day goes if we close the daily candle above the 59k then probably you know the probabilities of me becoming bullish uh, very bullish again are very high if we close the daily candle close to the 56 or even below it then the probabilities of me becoming a bear increase significantly okay so let's go to the four hour chart here are the lines we are exactly below that line there so let me just zoom a bit so you guys can see okay so the price is just below the line i drew here 
this should actually be the 59 exactly uh, let me just go back here use the coordinates and put it in 59 it's almost 59 but let's make it a 59 even and now yep exactly where the candle closed 59 and when where this candle started 59 so and this one is around 56 exactly so we have a three thousand dollars gap here where the price has been you know just going sideways you know already my opinion if we cross to the other side of this one to the upper side of this line here i become bullish again but we need the candle close and this would be much better if it was a daily candle closing above the 59k if we have a candle close below the 56 line then i become a bear at least for the short time and please don't troll me don't troll me because i I, I can be a short-term bear if I believe the price could go down a bit more before we go to the next, you know, top. So just um, don't come after me all the time because I said the price could go to 50, 53 area. And, uh, you know, it's <laughs> every day I get people trolling me about this. Okay, let's just go to the one hour chart and mainly to check um, how the funding rate is and the funding rate is around dot zero three so very low this is uh, this is bullish you know as long as the funding rate in bitmax funding rate is below the zero dot eleven it's uh, always a bullish uh, signal so or bullish sign i don't know exactly which is the appropriate word to say here uh, but anyway so the one hour chart we are finding support in the 50 period moving average which is the yellow line here the green line just joined the yellow one turning up also the 100 period red line is turning up here in the one hour so i guess in the short really really short term we are bullish trying to cross over the 59k if that happens if we have at least you know a four hour candle close above this line or a daily candle close above this line then um, the price action could turn very very bullish and we can you know soon sooner than we think we can have a new all-time high uh so let's hope that's the case if that's not the case if we cross below this one you know already i will be bearish for the short time for the you know short term sorry short term okay so let's go to the pro indicators chart which i really like also <coughs> sorry for that okay so i have to be brief here so we are still not confirming the third range boundary i already drew before i started this video the uh, ranging channel that we are supposed to have here i was expecting the price action to continue to the downside at least to these one of these two areas of interest this yellow this orange rectangle here would be my first one it's a, it's a very nice support around the 51k 52k uh, this one would be like a cherry on top for me this would be you know the extreme bottom of the the channel so if we could form a fourth range boundary around here this would be very very bullish for the future also a very nice long entry area but in the case that the price didn't couldn't come here down to this area around 47 48 ish this would be my next best area to go long uh, regarding the momentum and the sine wave we are going down the sine wave is the white line here <coughs> the momentum is the green line we just turn a bit up in the momentum but overall 
at least for the four hour chart in the pro indicators uh, I'm getting a bearish a bearish uh, kind of momentum here with the red background so <coughs> let's see what happens I guess the price is very you know indecisive at the moment there are really no big bears no big bulls the price is not moving too much we are just ranging sideways so let's see how how this evolves in the next few hours or one or two days and we can probably have a better picture of what will happen soon okay so let me check here something uh, I just mentioned the funding rate okay I promised um, there's uh, one comment that was uh, written in uh, not the previous video, the one before that, uh, by Bernardo Salgado Andrade. So he asked me uh, if I could talk a bit about my uh, stop loss and take profit strategies. So I'm just trying to be really brief about this. Let's see if I if, if I can explain how I usually. Um, what's my usual strategy for this uh, stop loss and, and take profit strategy so basically let's l let's take this chart the one we know already for bitcoin and i will um like in very general terms because i i don't like to share very um specific details about how i trade but anyway i'm i'm going to try to do that to explain what uh, bernardo asked me uh, so we have basically we have ranging when we trade inside the range uh, basically we have to identify the range boundaries which give us the you know the biggest um, ideas of what the price will be after the reversal so if you have for example I rarely trade the one range the first range boundary or the second because they are basically the first two to define the um, the ranging uh, channel so one of the best spots to have a trade in a ranging channel is the third range boundary where you can um, you know having to analyze the context of if this is a bull market or a bear market so in this case for example we are in a bull market right now because uh, bitcoin is going up so you have to consider that the third range boundary is a take profit uh, point uh, so and for example if you have a fourth range boundary if the price action comes down here to the bottom of this ranging channel then you have a long uh, area where you can also trade so taking this into consideration the third range boundary is a taking is a take profit area because we are in a bull market if we for example if this was a bear market then the third range boundary would be on the other side i, I will explain this in more detail someday about the range boundaries and difference between bull and bear market but in this case specifically this would be for me a take profit area and possibly if we see that the market is getting really squeezed i would also possibly in this case i even did that uh, short the market at least for some time until i see that there's a possible stop on that short and we are going up again so what i did was so let's uh, try to go a bit closer uh, in, unfortunately if I zoom you can't see the price levels but I will tell you that I as we were going up here I saw that the context which is the gray area behind the price here was the resistance context so I I was already knowing that the price would stop somewhere around here and have a reversal I started to bet around this candle here I was able to short this candle so what do I do I usually use three short levels uh, trying to you know try to guess to the best of my ability where the price could go so I made my first short here and then I increased my shorts in 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 doubles of the previous number so for example if this was a 60,000 
level, then I would make another uh, short entry at 6500. And then I would increase 1000. Then I would put another short around uh, 61. And then another one around 62. So basically I have different levels of um, four entries so that I can, you know, if you have four entries in the market, you can actually have the average of that in a position. So you make four entries and your position will be the average price of the four entries that you just made. So basically this strategy tries to you know if i get there i get there if i don't if if the price doesn't get there then it's okay anyway uh so basically i use this uh, three entries or four entries strategy just to try to get the the closest point to the reversal and then my position will be the average of the four entries and this will give me a much better um, entry point as the average so basically what i did was i i uh, configured in in my exchange uh, four entries around here which the last one was around so let me just check yeah the last one wasn't uh, filled just by 200 and something dollars but I had three positions that got filled and the average of those uh, three position uh, of those uh, three entries the average was my actual position when I went short this way here. And then, you know, you just uh, try to calculate where the price could go. I never, I never, uh, in the beginning, I never use, um, you know, a, a take profit strategy. So I just, I let my, my positions go uh, with the price. If I see, I have to be, of course, I have to be looking at the charts all the time. So if I see that the price will probably reverse because I have some signals, momentum, sine wave, or even the MRI, if I detect that some kind of reversal in that price is possible, then I just, uh, you know, I configure a stop loss, usually 10 to 5% below or above the price. If this is a short or a long, it depends. And then if that if that stop loss is met, then I'm out of the market and I take my profit. So basically, this is my strategy in general terms of how I trade uh, the market uh, short or long, depending on what's the direction of the price inside the ranging channel. So in in general terms here, if I see that this could be a reversal very strong one then i short the market for sure if i don't see that this is a strong reversal then i maybe i take profit uh, in this area close to the bottom of the ranging channel i usually go long uh, especially if this is you know above or even better if it's below the second range boundary price level i go long um so that's basically my strategy but i don't know if i you know if i answered your question uh, also of course if the price is coming down for the first range boundary not like this because it started to reverse here at the middle of the channel but if you see that the price is coming down f to form a really good fourth range boundary what i do is exactly the same i put three or four entry points trying to catch the best area possible for my entries and then of course my long position will be the average of those uh, three or four um, uh, entry points that got filled so usually this is my you know overall strategy to go long or short in the market of course i'm not talking about spot positions i'm talking about leverage positions which is the one of the you know uh, trading strategies i use them uh, more regularly uh, i also have uh, spot positions i buy in some key points of a bull market or uh, you know when the bull market is going up i i have some key levels that I like to go um, I like to go into the market with spot positions bigger sizes of course uh, when it comes to leverage trading I use smaller sizes usually between 3x 
to maybe 10x if I see the conditions of the market are good for that, but that's my range, 3x to 10x. Uh, when I was, uh, <laughs> years ago, when I was uh, doing some really stupid stuff, I usually used more than that. 25, 50x, I even used 100x sometimes. You know, one time I made money, but many times I lost, so it's not good if you use too much leverage. Don't forget that. So I hope I answered uh, Bernardo's question today. And Bernardo, please, if you have any more questions about my strategies for leverage trading, just, you know, leave a comment down there and I'll try to... Let me just go back. So if you have any more questions or any doubts, just leave a comment. I will try to answer the best, uh, uh, the best I can. Uh, of course, I, I will I will not uh, give any specific details of uh, where I trade, how I trade, what amounts I trade. But w when you know regarding my overall strategy, no problem. I can uh, explain people how um, how I do it. Anyway, just one disclaimer, which is really important. This is not financial advice. I'm not telling you how to trade. You should decide for yourself always i'm just uh, answering a question of someone who asked me how i trade but you should never take my trade strategy or uh, any thing regarding you know the way i trade as guidance for your own trades you should always try to decide uh, by yourself how you trade in the market you should get informed you should watch my videos, you should watch Tonevay's videos, you should watch Pro Indicators videos and learn how to trade and then take your own decisions, of course. So please don't copy me, don't use my strategy as if this was like 100% uh, guaranteed or anything like that, because this is not financial advice and I always um, tell people to learn by themselves and make the decisions by themselves. Okay, so this video is already very long. Um, um, so I was trying, I was aiming at 15-20 uh, minutes max, we already passed that, so I hope you enjoyed this video and please comment below, hit uh, the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet and share with your friends and I'll see you in the next one, bye bye.